G'day, welcome to this video. I'm making this video for New Zealanders, for Kiwis who have just got a drone, maybe for Christmas, or you're gonna buy a drone in the Boxing Day sales, but you're gonna end up with your very first drone. What do you need to know to stay out of trouble and make sure your drone doesn't get crashed or blown away in the wind? What are the important things that you need to know about right now? Well, I'm gonna cover that with you, but who am I? If you're new to the channel, my name's Bruce Simpson. I've been flying model aircraft and drones, and just for the record, the Civil Aviation Authority, the people who make up the rules and enforce those rules, they don't know the difference between a model aeroplane, you know the old model aeroplanes kids flew for years, and a drone. They think they're exactly the same and they have exactly the same rules for both. And that's kind of a hint at how out of touch some of our rules are with reality. But hey, speaking of rules, I have printed out the rules here. Look, here are the rules that you need to know before you can fly your drone or your model aircraft without risking getting into trouble, stingy fines, thousands of dollars in fines. So you need to memorize these rules and before you go flying. So you ready? Yep, all that. And that's the problem. These rules are not only out of date, but they are huge in volume. So I'm gonna try and condense them down for you by answering a few questions that I'm pretty sure you'd be asking me if you were standing here right now. So let's get on with the questions and the answers. Question number one, where can you fly your drone? You got a new drone, where can you fly it? I mean, you've probably seen videos on YouTube of people f overseas flying their drones, getting fantastic shots of landscape, scenery, buildings, you know, um, friends at the beach, all that sort of stuff. Well, I'm sorry, but in New Zealand, we're pretty restricted. Our rules state that you cannot fly anywhere, but anywhere without the prior permission of the owner of the property over which your drone will be flying. So can you fly at the local schoolyard? Well, if you can get the permission of the Board of Trustees to fly your drone there, you can, but if they don't give permission, you're not allowed. Can you fly at the local park? Well, you've got to check with your local council to see if they allow drone flying in the park. Some do, some don't. Often they let you, but they come with conditions. And uh, you know, you've got to follow those conditions, otherwise you'll be in big trouble. Now, can you fly at the local airport? No, you can't, it's, it's forbidden. You're not allowed to fly within four kilometers of an airport or a helipad because it's just not safe to do so. And there is exceptions to that, but um, I won't go into them in this video. Suffice to say, stay away from airports, stay away from helipads. And remember, if your town or city has a hospital, chances are that hospital has a helipad. And so for a four kilometer radius around there, you're not allowed to fly these things. You get into big, big trouble. If you want to know whether you are close to an airport or a helipad, I'll put a link in the description to a site called Airshare where you can go and pull up maps which will show you where all the airports and, and uh, helipads are just to make sure you're on the right side of the rules. And it's worth mentioning that most dock land is a no-go area, and, but you can apply by filling out a form and paying money and they may allow you to fly on dock land, but most of it, no, not allowed. So that wonderful scenic panorama you plan to get with your drone, maybe not. Maybe not. Next question, how high can you fly your drone? How high can you go? I mean, this is all go very, very high, but the reality is that according to the rules, you must go no higher than 120 meters or 400 feet in the old money. And most drones, modern drones like this little one here and um, some of the older ones, most of them, if they're made by companies like DJI, a major drone manufacturer, they will automatically limit you to no more than 120 meters. The reason for that is very simple. Manned aircraft and helicopters fly no, no lower than 500 feet. So if drones can go no higher than 400 feet, there's 100 feet separation, which keeps things safe. And that's another reason why we don't fly near airports and helipads, because that's pretty much the only time that manned aircraft dip below that 500 feet into the area where there could be drones. So that's why we keep the drones away from airports. Manned aircraft have to come down that low to land. So we keep the drones at least four kilometers away from them. Everybody stays safe. Now, how far away can you fly? How far will these go? These will, well, actually, the technology allows these things to go a long, long way. Five, 10, sometimes 15 kilometers away, you could fly this thing, or these things, if you wanted to, but you're not allowed to. Legally speaking, there's a thing called the visual line of sight rule, which means you must always be able to see your drone with your own unaided vision. You can use your glasses, but you're not allowed telescopes or binoculars. You must be able to see the drone at all times so that if an airplane comes along, you can move out of the way, you know, it makes sense. I mean, just because you're following the rules doesn't mean everyone else is following the rules. You may be at 300 feet, but an airplane could come through at 300 feet breaking the rules, but you're still responsible because the regulations say you must always give way to any manned aircraft if you're flying a drone. So to do that, you've got to be able to see 
your drone to see where it is in relation to anything else that might be in the sky. So that's the visual line of sight rule. It's a very important one and so don't be tempted to see how far away you can go because you might go out five kilometres and if an aeroplane came along at the wrong height and you, you couldn't see it because you can't see your drone, bad things could happen and that's not what we want. Now the visual line of sight rule is also very important because these days a lot of people are flying their drones with these FPV goggles. They're virtual reality goggles in a way and when you have a drone that has a camera in it, it sends a signal back to the goggles and it projects that into your eyes when you put the goggles on like this, voila, and it's just like being actually in the drone. It's as if you are sitting right up the front here in the drone and so you can fly through all sorts of places you wouldn't be able to fly if you're just looking at the drone from outside and it's a fantastic new branch of the hobby that's really taking off in a lot of ways. The problem is if you put goggles over your eyes you can't actually see the drone anymore. You can see from the drone but you can't see the drone so you'll be breaching the visual line of sight rule which means you need someone standing with you who is going to be looking at your drone. As long as somebody's got their eyes on the drone it's okay. So that person is called the visual observer. He must be or she must be standing beside you and warn you of any dangers that may come along because although you've got the best view in the house out of this little camera it's only looking forwards and who knows if you were fly if an aeroplane came along from behind you wouldn't know but the visual observer will be able to see and point it out. Now this is one of the rules that's getting a bit old in my honest opinion because I fly little drones around in my backyard and I do it with these goggles on but I'm breaking the regulation because I don't have someone here standing beside me to warn me if there was perhaps a jumbo jet coming through my backyard risking damaging my drone or crashing into my drone. It's ridiculous. There are, there are occasions when you just don't need that visual observer but there are no exceptions. By law you are required to have it so be aware of that if you get if you get an FPV drone, you fly it without a visual observer, you could get a big fine. Now let's talk about your first flights or your first few flights. You've got the new drone taken out of the box, throwing the manual in the bin because you're a man, you don't read manuals. If you're a woman, you probably read the manual. But what do you do? How do you go out and, and learn to fly this thing without risking its loss or its damage or hurting people or breaking their property? So what you do is you first of all choose the right time of day. You, want, you, you don't want wind. Wind is an enemy because it can blow things away quite quickly. This is particularly true if you have a drone that doesn't include GPS. And most modern drones from companies like DJI, in fact all the DJI drones I think, have GPS built into them so they will just stay in position and they'll just fight the wind. But some of the cheaper drones, the ones you get from Repco and the warehouse, they don't have GPS. So when the wind blows, they'll just blow away. So especially with those drones you need to find a wide open space and you need to have permission to fly in that wide open space so check the council's websites and you need to be able to um, go out there on a calm, calm part of the day right in the middle so that if it starts drifting off you can just land it, walk over, pick it up, bring it back before you get the hang of all the controls. Um, yeah choose carefully and choose an area where there are not a lot of people around and no dogs. I've lost track of the number of times I've seen people trying to learn to fly a drone in a public park in an area where dogs are allowed off leash and they're just a few feet above the ground and a dog comes and chomps the drone. drone. You don't want that. So choose a time and a place where there are no people, no pets and then you'll be able to spend the time necessary to learn the skills to fly the thing safely and then you can fly in more challenging conditions with a bit of, with a bit of wind and uh, maybe you know when there are maybe people there but not directly underneath the drone. Okay now I've spoken about the fact that the New Zealand CAA rules are so old and dated and there's so many of them you can't be, how can you be expected to, to mem memorise all those? Now I put a link in the description to some of the little brochures that the CAA puts out to try and simplify things and they've got a series of videos on YouTube you know so accumulate as much knowledge as you can but the, the one thing I want to get across to you is that other countries have simplified their rules quite, quite a lot. Now if you live in for example in Canada and you've got a little drone like this that weighs less than 250 grams then you can fly it under the simple rules that say don't endanger people, don't endanger people's property, don't fly where you're not supposed to. Three simple rules and those are the rules I generally fly under because if, you, if you're doing that then all these other rules, just like my t-shirt says, you know, rules are, are, are a great source of good advice but when you focus on the, what you're trying to achieve with rules, the, the rules are there to try and protect people and property. So if I put protection of people and property foremost in my mind, the rules are simply uh, advisory, they give you um, information on how you can best do that. But the rules themselves are just a means to an end, I focus on that end. Do not endanger people, do not endanger property and that generally involves the other key thing is just stay away from airports and helipads because you know just too risky. So 
you don't endanger people, don't endanger property. If you have that, and before you do anything with your drone, before you fly anywhere, you go, now, could this endanger somebody or could it endanger someone's property? And if, even if the answer is maybe, then just don't do it. Find somewhere else or go another time or whatever, away from people, away from other people's property and fly then. So it's common sense. It's just common sense. Now, the regulators in New Zealand, the Civil Aviation Authority, seem to think that Kiwis just don't have any common sense. They can't be trusted, can't be relied on to make sensible decisions. Canada, well, their regulators are a little more uh, flattering towards the people. And despite the fact that Canada's had these rules where you've only got the three rules, uh, for quite a few years now, there's not, to my knowledge, been a single instance of anyone being injured by a sub-250 gram drone or any property being damaged by a sub-250 gram drone. So those rules are working really, really well. Here in New Zealand, we're considered to be too stupid to operate under rules like that. They, the, the CAA has to tell us exactly what to do in a very prescriptive way. I'm not particularly happy with that. Remember that these rules here in New Zealand were made long before craft like this were even able to be imagined. When those rules were made in 2015, drones were far less controllable, they were far more dangerous, and they were heavier, um, less sophisticated. Now, this little drone here is amazing. This is a DJI Neo. I'm not trying to sell you one. I bought this with my own hard-earned money. Uh, but it will fly even without a control box. It, it will follow you around like an obedient servant with a camera and film you at 4K. And so I am use this when I make videos, I get out and I can get third, part, third perspectives on my, you know, when I'm walking around. Um, it's, it's my little mobile cameraman and I don't even need a phone or a radio control transmitter to operate it. This was completely out of the question when the rules were made. The rules were not made to cover things like this, but they force you to use this or they stop you from using it when it would be quite reasonable to do so. For example, if you look at reviews for this thing online, you'll see people walking down the street, this thing's following them, or it's going in front of them, they're using it as a camera. Can't do that in New Zealand. You're not allowed to fly over footpaths. You're not allowed to fly over roads. You're not allowed to fly over railway lines. You're not allowed to fly virtually anywhere. So this thing in New Zealand is, is crippled by the rules. And that has to change. It really has to change. But in the meantime, you have to follow those rules. You have to follow them. Now one final word, and then we've got rules, but we've got common sense as well, and the big thing is courtesy. Now, you can fly your drone safely, whatever, and uh, you may not be following all the rules to the letter. I mean, I have to confess, I don't follow all the rules to the letter. I put my 65 years of experience to use, my understanding, my knowledge, my common sense, and my high priority on protecting the safety of other people and their property. I apply that first. Sometimes, that means the rules are not a good fit. I don't follow them to the letter. But what I do is I observe courtesy. Because in my own experience, you're unlikely to get in trouble with CAA, even if you are sort of technically breaking some of the rules, unless someone reports you. Now, if, if you've pissed someone off, if, if, if you annoy them and they go and make a complaint, then CAA will jump on your case, investigate, and you could be hit with some really big fines, even if it was just a technical breach of the rules. So. Be courteous, be considerate of other people. I'll give you an example. You may find I can legally fly in my local park. The council allows me to do so. You go down there with your drone. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. There are families out everywhere having picnics and you know, there's very little spare space and you decide to fly anyway. Now, people are not going to be very happy for a number of reasons. First of all, people have this phobia about drones that the drones are spying on them. So if you're flying your drone around while a family's trying to have a nice picnic in the park, they may be concerned that you're spying on their kids and they may you know, say this is not good enough. They may, you know, go over and uh, um, bully you, attack you, whatever. Who knows? They may just complain to CAA, maybe trace back to you, and then there you go, you're in trouble. Uh, because the rules say you may not fly over people, and these people will doubtless say, oh, they were flying over me when you may have been, you know, further away. It's just don't create, don't, don't bring the trouble upon yourself, and don't fly over areas where you're not supposed to, because someone will complain, someone will bitch, someone will grizzle, and then CIA will have to investigate, and you could end yourself up with fines. Do not fly near airports. Don't get your new drone and go, oh, I'm going to go out to Auckland International Airport and get some nice pictures of airliners landing. No, <laughs> because that is absolutely verboten for all the right reasons, I would never tell anybody to do that. I never suggest to do that. In fact, I say do not do that because you are endangering property and life if you do. And CAA will certainly jump on your case and you will end up in really big trouble if you do that. So just use your common sense, use courtesy, and uh, think of things from other people's perspectives and have fun with your drone to the extent that you're allowed to in this country, which is not as much as in other countries, I'm afraid. Um, we'll change that. Don't worry, I'm on the case.
in the meantime, if you've got questions, because undoubtedly people will have questions, it's, it can be complicated and confusing to start with, go down to the comment section on here. I will do my best to answer your questions and give you the information you need. As I say, I'm a Kiwi, I'm here in New Zealand, I've been doing this for 65 years, I know the rules inside out, and I also know what's safe and what's not. And so I'll give you the benefit of my opinion and my informed perspective if you ask for it. Thanks for watching. Now, if you found this video useful, go and look through the other videos on this channel. There's a lot of stuff with drones and model aircraft. I deal a lot in the, uh, the rules and the regulations, not just in New Zealand, but around the world. And there's also some fun videos. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. It always helps. And uh, share it with friends, because you may have other friends who have got drones or are interested in getting drones. Share it around. And if you really, really like, you can subscribe. I won't stop you. There's no fee. It's all free. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Have a Merry Christmas. Have a great New Year. Don't get into trouble. Stay safe and keep everybody around you safe as well. Happy droning. Bye for now. Hey, I think you should. Ah, uh, I'll subscribe to the uh, IXJ channel. Can't fly it here. Why not? I said no. <laughs> you said no? Yeah. Oh, seriously? Yeah. No. Oh, well, that's ruined my day.